much for inviting me along here today uh, to share some insights and some stories around what I like to call the audience pie. Now, I'm not encouraging you all go back and become Sweeney Todd and set up a whole raft of uh, Mrs. Lovett's pie shops in any town around the country. I instead, I'm interested in the science, the creativity of baking. You need certain vital ingredients, but there's also an element of flair, imagination, to create that tasty pie. So I think I've got the best job in the world. I work for these two amazing theatres in Liverpool, the Everyman and the Playhouse. They have a combined history of over 200 years, and together they've launched the careers of many an actor and writer that we know and love today. They even helped me start on my road to the arts. And in 2002, I returned to my home city, charged with rebuilding their audiences and their reputation. I arrived. We didn't have a full-time artistic director. The executive director said, um, I'm leaving in six months. <laughs> the finance director took me into their office and said, so, you've got the answer. You've got the magic formula to getting audiences through the doors. I took a deep breath. I didn't. I really didn't. Since then, I've tried to discover what that magic formula, that secret recipe might be, and I've got a little bit of a suggestion, maybe. Could it be that ticket sales is a combination of printing some posters, the P, we'll print about 100, and if we add a couple of boosted Facebook posts, great. Oh, maybe not. Perhaps let's do an Instagram story. They're really popular now, aren't they? And if we do a bit of Twitter from backstage, oh, maybe we should do some leaflets. Actors like to see their pictures on leaflets. <laughs> <sighs> maybe just a couple of thousand. Still not quite at target, OK? Well, the press officer, they've got the cast on local radio. It's going to be fine. There's going to be an interview, and they're going to sing some songs from the show. Brilliant. We're also going to get it reviewed in the local paper, and if we get some stars, jobs are good and fantastic. I'm sure many of you have had those conversations. My conclusion has been that it's not quite as simplistic as all of that. I've always been fascinated by audiences and how they do and don't connect with the art forms that we create. That's essentially my job, sharing the joy of live theatre with people, particularly those people who don't think it's for them. That's especially true in a city like Liverpool. It's a city of extremes. It's a city that's been voted one of the top destinations to visit by many a, a, a travel guide, but it's also got some of the most deprived wards in England. Could there be a clever equation that could engage audiences from across the city? A perfect recipe. At the very top of my ingredients list is understanding audiences. Understanding who they are and who they could be. It's a simple trick I've learned, inspired by one of my favourite books, To Kill a Mockingbird. I shouldn't just look at the numbers, it's much deeper than that. True understanding comes from really seeing things from another point of view looking at their situation, their behaviour and their motivations are all key things. Think about walking in their skin, as Atticus tells Scout. Our audience at the Everyman and Playhouse has changed a lot over the last few years, <laughs> as our programme and the city has changed. We've developed a really broad definition of audience. It's more than the person that buys a theatre ticket or joins a member scheme. It's everyone who engages with us, from the people who sit in our street cafe over a cup of coffee, those who browse our social channels or our website, donate money or join in an activity in our community centres or our schools. In most organisations, and ours is no exception, these very different audiences all sit in separate departments, whether it's ticketing, marketing, membership, development, front of house, education, community or trading. Some might say silos. I was challenged to think this about my organisation again after Jack's wonderful speech at conference in August. He talked about how silos emerge from a desire for us to be efficient, to classify the world around us and make it easier to manage. But how can they can sometimes restrict thinking and duplicate effort? It's worth watching on the YouTube channel if you haven't. 
He encouraged us to rethink, imagine our success and transform. It made me reflect on my own organization to think back to when we'd done it so well, working across those departments, across those silos. It's something we hadn't done quite so well in recent years. I want to take you back to 2011. This is the old everyman, a much-loved institution, but preparing to be demolished. I cried a lot in meetings. <laughs> It would make way for a shiny, all-singing, all-dancing, accessible and sustainable theatre, fit for the 21st century. But what did that mean for our audiences then and in the future? This was our silo-busting moment. It was when our organisation came together, all departments together, to champion one overarching aim. Yes, we would physically rebuild the theatre, but we would create an everyman for everyone. It was truly transformational, not just physically. Everyone knew where they were heading and what their role was in the journey. We were truly audience-focused. It was a real catalyst for our thinking. Even the fabric of the building reflected the 105 on our portrait wall of the people of the city. I could spend several hours sharing the journey from closing to opening, but what I will say is I don't think I've ever learned as much about myself the organisation, or my city. We won all sorts of awards, including the Reba Sterling Prize. We beat the Shard in London and the Olympic Aquatic Centre. <laughs> but what was really important was that the audiences loved it. Our existing audiences really loved it. And those who enjoyed it for the first time were loving it too. Someone described it as a superhero version of the old everyman, and I think that's kind of apt. So, all's good. Our audience pie is bigger, income is growing, and the team have all got their feet up. Not quite, I'm afraid. Yes, we've had some amazing productions on our stages, from reinventing Shakespeare with our friends at The Globe, staging a lost film script from uh, Arthur Miller with our friends at Northampton, our award-winning youth programme, Young Everyman Playhouse, has stormed the stage with shows tackling politics, the environment and corruption. And earlier this year, after a 25-year absence, we created a new repertory company, staging five productions in six months with an acting company of 14. This was a response to a changing business plan as we remodelled the organisation in a process of change. It's been a roller coaster of a year. I like to think of it as the great everyman company experiment. Some of it worked, some of it didn't. The spirit of the company working together on stage was quite something to behold. But off stage, well, we kind of all dropped back into the old ways of working, despite our best intentions. It was just easier when there was so much to do. So I've spent some time reflecting upon this and thinking about those silos again. What was it about the Everyman campaign that brought us all together with such focus on our audiences? What were those magic ingredients? And could I blend them together again to make our audience pie bigger, with more audiences, different audiences and deeper relationships? This quote is the screensaver of our head of development, Rowena, and we've been thinking a lot about it as we map out the ambitions of our organisational audience plan to grow audiences' income and joy. We may have all the audience insight in the world, but are we truly listening to what it's telling us? Are the stories just the ones we want to hear or that we want to tell our funders? What are our audiences actually listening for? Are we telling the stories they want to hear? And how are they listening, especially in a constantly changing digital world? Are we still using the same old channels of communication? Listening, I think, is a vital ingredient for our audience pie. Thinking back to our experience of the everyman, I think we really were listening, taking our audience on the journey with us. At every step, we asked questions and listened closely. When we started to think about the future everyman back in 2009, we asked about its spirit and what a dream everyman would be for the 21st century. It was good to hear so many of the words they, the audience spoke chimed with what we'd been saying internally. 
an informal space, raucous, homely, accessible, green and thrilling. We were actively listening to our audiences. As we closed in 2011 with our finale celebrations, which was a bit, a bit like a wake, actually, we asked for first and favourite moments to be shared. These included lots about great shows, being part of the youth theatre, and how life-changing that was, but also stories of first dates and the discovery of new tastes like this one. Hummus and French bread. <laughs> Quite radical back in 1983. Our audiences had such history with us, more than just watching the shows on our stage. For reopening back in March 2014, we asked people for their hopes and good wishes. I particularly like this one. I'm going to read it to you, I love it so much. Dear Everyman, I've been having a relationship with your sister while you were away, but you will always be my first love. If it's okay with you, I'd like to continue seeing you both. I really like this one because it actually connects the two theatres together, which is really important. And that was really important for, on our opening weekend. We had a big lights-up event. We closed the streets of Liverpool on a wet Saturday night, and our blue playhouse lady led a lantern parade up through the streets of the city to Hope Street, where she met her red lantern sister. It was a magical night, despite the rain and the cold. In all our planning for the opening events, there was a vital ingredient. Joy. It wasn't a light dusting sugar top on top of our pie. It was the very essence of our pie, our sense of who we were as an organisation, beyond the buildings, one might say brand. While the Everyman was closed, we revisited our vision, our mission and our values, and our artistic director was tasked with writing a manifesto, a statement of intent. We had to imagine a little bottle with joy beyond expectation on the label. In the bottle were key ingredients, a blend of humanity, dare, brilliance, time and place, forward thinking and popularity. Now, it wasn't just about putting on happy plays. There's something quite joyfully cathartic in one of those tragic operas like La Bohème or Tosca, or indeed Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, as seen here. That joy or joie de vie is something us as humans, we really, really crave, especially at the moment. And as arts organisations, we have it in bucket loads. But do we share it? Do we really share it, share the experience? We're often too busy agreeing the names on a poster of people nobody really care about. <laughs> we should be sharing the emotion. We should be sharing the experience, creating those magic moments of connection in our spaces where families share or time to explore. Do we really think about the moments of joy we can offer before and after our events? This quote from Tessa Stevens of Coney is one I heard many years ago, and it stayed with me. Audiences begin their experiences way before they walk through the door of your organisation and continue long after the applause has died. It's been inspiring me and our organisation to think about the whole audience journey, their lifetime journey with us, our relationships with them, and the experiences we offer. This is something we really thought carefully about when we were preparing to open the Everyman. And I'd like to suggest another essential ingredient. It's what I like to call the M and E mix. It's a very practical ingredient. It's an extension of the traditional marketing mix to incorporate engagement and participation. Of course, it includes price, place, partnership, product promotion, participation. If we want to engage younger audiences, we need to think about our ticket prices. Are we the sort of space that young people want to hang out in? Should we partner with local universities or create a wider participation programme like Young Everyman Playhouse? If our new accessible Everyman was going to be used by the deaf and disabled communities of the city, it wasn't just about having a new lift. Would the hearing loop work? Um, should we offer a companion seat? Um, what are the other support systems that we can offer our audiences? Now, all of these elements can work on their own, but a bit like the individual ingredients in a mixed spice or a garam masala, they do work on their own. But when blended together, 
with a little bit of theory, with real focus on audience insight, listening to our audiences and focusing on the whole experience, they can become really, really powerful. So, we have our perfect pie. Insight, listening, joy and our M&E mix. Seamlessly intertwining our departments together like a careful lattice, weaving wonderful stories to share. Not quite. Opening the Everyman was a spectacular moment for us, a catalyst for change, and it took immense courage from the moment we decided to knock a much-loved building down to opening the doors for the very first time. Courage is, I believe, that final missing ingredient. Now, I'm not suggesting you all go back and call the builders in or, or try and conquer the South Pole like this production here. It might be about courage to try something new, to start that conversation with a colleague in another department about how you might work together towards achieving a shared ambition. And I don't believe you have to be the head of a department to do that. And remember, little changes can have big impacts too. So we like to think of ourselves as an artistically-led, audience-focused and experience-driven organisation. And we're trying to reimagine what that might be if we're going to grow our audiences, our income and joy. It's early days, but here's how our pie might look. Please forgive the scribble, I did say it was early days. At the centre is our audience. They're happy, smiling faces, they love us. And they're sharing that with their friends on social media, and they're spending money with us. The audience-facing departments, what I now like to call the A-team, the audience team, wrap around marketing and sales, development, engagement, and front of house and trading. And we sit within the artistic vision of the organisation. There's lines, but not silos, and conversations, the arrows are flowing freely. It's not perfect, but we're getting there. In it, a magic formula, perhaps, a secret recipe to growing those audiences and earning more income. I don't think this is far off. Think about your audiences, understand their motivations and have a conversation. How does your organisation bring joy? Collaborate with your colleagues and tell great stories together and take courage. Thank you. <laughs>